How does IVF work? You might be wondering what's involved in IVF and whether it could be right for you. How does the process work and who should go down this path in their fertility journey? There can be a lot of information to take in, so let's talk about it in today's video. Welcome to Fertile Minds. I'm Dr. Andrew Hedges, Clinical Director of Hunter IVF. My specialties lie in gynaecology, reproductive endocrinology, infertility and IVF. And I have over 20 years experience in helping women and couples have their best chance of falling pregnant. So what is IVF? IVF stands for in vitro fertilization and the process where sperm fertilizes the eggs in the laboratory rather than in a woman's fallopian tube. To put it simply, this involves placing the egg from a woman together with many thousand sperm, typically about 100,000, then fertilizing the embryos to grow in the laboratory over five days to the blastocyst stage before being transferred into the woman's uterus in a simple procedure called an embryo transfer. The embryo transfer process involves passing a very fine tube containing embryo into the cervix or through the cervix into your own cavity. Usually one embryo at a time is transferred and additional embryos are frozen or stored for use in subsequent treatments. So who is IVF suitable for? For many couples or individuals, IVF offers the best chance of achieving pregnancy. Well, pregnancy, IVF might be recommended for a, a wide range of conditions including sperm abnormality, endometriosis, tubal damage, ovulation problems, or unexplained infertility. It may also be an option for single women and same-sex couples uh, to choose donor sperm to have a baby. So what does a typical IVF cycle looks like? The first step is to obtain a, an appointment with a fertility specialist, and your specialist will review your medical history and previous investigations and treatments uh, that you and your partner might have had. You should both attend the first appointment with your fertility specialist. They'll review your medical history, all the previous treatments and investigations, and then provide preliminary advice about your options. You'll need to let the fertility team know when you've had the first day of your period, and they will coordinate the dates for the remainder of your IVF treatment plan. Follicle stimulating hormone is introduced and your eggs will begin to grow. FSH is administered through a diabetic style pen, stimulating your ovaries to produce more eggs than they would in a given month. And we have a chance of achieving fertilization of pregnancy where we can collect more eggs. The pen is very easy to use and our nurses will teach you how to administer their daily injections. Naturally, your body produces a number of follicles that grow every month, but only one reaches maturity. By administering a higher dose of FSH, this natural production each month, we're able to increase the some of these follicles which wouldn't normally grow to maturity. The medic another medication will also stop the follicles from being released naturally and this medication is continued up to we trigger the injection about two, uh, trigger the tr ovulation about two days prior to egg collection. Throughout your IVF treatment we'll monitor how you're responding to the medication with blood tests and ultrasound to measure the thickness of the line of the uterus and the size and number of follicles that are developing in your ovaries and based on this information we can determine the very best time to plan egg collection. We use a trigger injection. Once you have the right number of follicles, the right size, and the role of that injection is to help mature the eggs and get them ready for an egg collection. Um, you'll be advised two days before your egg collection the exact time and that you're required to give your trigger injection. And this is usually about 37 hours prior to egg collection. The egg collection procedure itself is undertaken in our day surgery unit under local or general anaesthetic and it takes about 30 minutes and typically you'll be in hospital about four hours and you'll need someone to drive you home afterwards um, and you won't work that day. The procedure is performed using an ultrasound, uh, ultrasound probe with a little needle guide attached and we pass a fine needle through the vagina wall into the ovary and then we drain the fluid from each of the little follicles and hopefully collect the eggs. The tube containing the fluid and hopefully an egg is given to our um, embryologist who's in theatre with us and the embryologist will sort through that fluid and work out how many eggs we've got. On the morning of your egg collection your partner will also need to produce a fresh sperm sample unless we have some backup frozen sperm so we can use that sperm to fertilise the eggs. The next step is fertilisation where the egg and the sperm will be placed in the dish together to allow fertilisation to occur naturally or we'll inject a single sperm into the egg to achieve fertilization by a process called ICSI. 
The day after the egg collection, the scientists will contact you to discuss the, the number of eggs that are fertilised and of those fertilised eggs, we'll then grow them for the next five days to pick the, the best embryo to return to your uterus. That embryo transfer procedure is a fairly simple procedure. It's like a pap smear. We put a speculum in the vagina and put a little fine tube up into the womb um, to transfer the embryo. Uh, and if we have extra embryos over and above that one we put back that are good enough quality, we'll freeze them for use in other cycles. The blood test is then organised nine to 10 days later to see if pregnancies occur. What are the chances of success with IVF? IVF's very powerful technology and in our best groups, the pregnancy rates vary from 45 to 55%, but there are, everyone has individual circumstances which can affect the chances of pregnancy and it's important to discuss that with your fertility specialist. I hope that you found this video helpful and always remember your own personal story and individual circumstances can be discussed with your GP or fertility specialist. If you'd like to see more videos speaking on all things fertility, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions about anything that I've spoken about in this video, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and take care.